Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bit Amount, and today is Friday, March 10th. And uh, we're going to take a look, as we always do, at last week's uh, eBay auction, see how things went, what they brought, some of the highlights, interesting things. And we're also going to take a look at a sale that Sotheby's has coming up on March 14th, so stick around for that. Uh, we loaded the catalogs today uh, on the site, and we'll show you how to find them. It's of their Ming collection. They got a collection of 14 pieces of probably some of the best Ming ceramic uh, to come on the market, and oh, I don't know, as a group in the, in the last few years at least. It's a, some great examples, and we're going to take a look at some, a few of those, and you can you can go read the catalog for yourself. Regina Crowell did a lot of the writing on it, and uh, she's a true scholar and well worth reading. So. Take the time. It's worth it. Uh, so we're going to start here. This was uh, an interesting vase that uh, ancient legends had put up. It was 45 centimeters tall, a nice big vase. Um, had an old, uh, some sort of inventory number on the bottom, but typical uh, late 19th, very late 19th century foot. But nicely painted, nicely done vase, 45 centimeters. And it went for $1,145, which is a very fair price for that. Um, perfectly nice price, and it was a good deal for the seller as well. And then there was this. This is a nice little Sung Foliate Rim Bowl. <clears throat> I thought it would do better. It only brought about $130. Uh, it's a provincial wear. It's not a very, very fine one. But if you collect Sung pieces, they don't turn up very often. This was one of them. That's why we put it in the newsletter. It was around four inches in diameter, but a good example of a nice old surface. And uh, as I said, it, it went reasonably, um, just $134. So uh, I think somebody got a nice buy on that if they collect Sung pieces. And then there was this hat stand. This is a, a hexagonal hat stand that somebody had. Who was the seller here? Oh, Digger Studio. Yeah, he gets good things. He's a, he's, he's a ceramicist, of, a dealer of ceramics of all kinds. But he got this. Uh, and, and as these uh, buy wears, they always bring um, very good money if they have script on them. This is a Republican period example, uh, judging by the way this, this script is done here. Um, seems to be more Republican, and uh, it did very, very well, though. This uh, wonderful piece was in good condition, brought uh, $2,026, I suspect, to a Chinese buyer. Uh, they they suck these up like crazy. And then there was this, the Egmont Horn, who uh, sells on here once in a while. He gets good, very good things. He's, he's in, the, uh, in, the, in the U.K., and uh, this very nice uh, Wan Li, uh, late Ming uh, bowl, uh, very typical of these with the uh, insects and the, there's a grasshopper here and a, and a bee coming down above. But nice deep cobalt blue, a good example. Minor fritting around the rim. Often some of these are just fritted to death. And um, for those of you that aren't familiar with these, this is what the back of it looks like. There it is. Very typical foot. A little bit of kiln grit here and there. Sometimes you see these radiating lines going out uh, in the glaze. There, there's a bunch of them down here. Pretty typical. They do fake those, though, on the more modern examples. So you've got to be careful. Sometimes they actually sort of rake them in with a comb or something. And it did well, $865. So there you go. And then we had this. This was a very nice uh, Persian market Chinese export plate. Uh, very good quality. Try to blow it up. Oh, there it is. And I love this the, the way they put these gilded panels um, alternating with, with the uh, uh, female court uh, figures. Um, here's the center of it. There's some Persian script. It was uh, named, uh, uh, belonging to a fellow named Sultan. Um, there it is, uh, circa 1879. Uh, nice example. And it brought a good price, $906. It was fairly large. It was around uh, 13 or so inches in size. But $13, uh, $900, not bad. And there was this plate. I, I'm a fan of Japanese blue and white. I uh, always liked it. I own a few, few big, good pieces. This was a nice plate. Uh, Japanese ceramics, as you know, have been in a tailspin for the last 20 years. And uh, this one was put up. I, th I, th I thought it was pretty wonderful. Very typical uh, foot rim on these for these early 18th century, late 17th century pieces with this, dire, with this uh, Y pattern on the spurs, which you see on Japanese pieces very frequently. Um, and the patterns changed over time. So it's one of the little ways they try to date them by the pattern. And uh, but this was a nice example, and uh, went very reasonably. Um, uh, it was a 12 over 12 inches in diameter, and uh, it went for 266 dollars. 
uh, to give you an idea, back in the 90s, plates like this used to sell for uh, 1500 to 2500 pretty regularly. They've come way down in value. Good time to collect. And then there was this late Ming piece with these uh, seals. This was a very nice example. I love the uh, soft uh, green background. They often did these in blue and white. Yeah, but this was a very nice one. Uh, caught my eye. Um, and uh, there it is. Egmont Horn had this one as well. And it did fine. It brought $2,029. Uh, there's some more pictures of it down here. And uh, it was a good size one. It was 15 inches in diameter. So I think somebody got a really good buy on that. I, it was a nice thing. It did very well. But boy, what a wonderful big piece. And here's another big one. Now, now this one, this isn't closed yet. If you're, if you're uh, watching this uh, before uh, Monday, uh, um, this coming Monday, the uh, 13th, this is a, a, a big one Lee crack charger that's been put up by Ascot Cord Antiques. This is a really nice one. Uh, check out the, the design on this, this beautiful deep cobalt all the way around, luxurious use of cobalt. This is a real good one. Um, I mean, the other one was very nice. I'm not knocking it, but this is a really good one. And uh, again, you have the same sort of foot. That's the classic foot on these, these little bits of goo and gunk in there. Um, there it is again. There's an iron line, iron oxide line there from the firing. Uh, here are some turnings on the base. There it is. That's what the back of these should look like. A really nice example. It's a bowl. It's got some fritting, typical, nothing to be alarmed about. Um, but what a great uh, piece. There it is with an apple in it to give you an idea of scale. With these three foo lines chasing around the middle. Very classic uh, late Ming scene. Same scene you see on carpets and, uh, and uh, silk sometimes. At any rate, it's up to $2,800. And uh, if you're not watching it, um, you should. It should. It should bring. Eight, I would think uh, seven to ten thousand. It may bring. May bring a little less. May bring a little more. But somewhere in there. Nice piece. And uh, coming up, also closing um, this pair of panels. I want to show these to you. These were sent to me. The fellow that's selling them. I don't know him, but he emailed me pictures of them a while ago, and, and I um, took a look at them for him. Uh, very nice. Uh, cloisonne. Uh, uh, flat, you know, one-sided cloisonne with a mother, of, uh, mother of pearl, and different uh, sort of soft stone elements carving out of them. These are nice big ones, very decorative, uh, probably mid 19th century. Uh, he thinks they're 18th century. I don't agree with him. I think they're a little later, uh, maybe early 19th. But nice examples. They're up to $455, and they're pretty big, um, 32 inches tall each. So uh, they'd make a great display for a wall. Uh, if you're interested, all right. And that was about it for the week. It was sort of quiet. Uh, Chamberlain Antiques uh, draw, uh, Juice has a sale closing Monday with some terrific things in it. And uh, there's some other things still on the site uh, that haven't ended yet, uh, so take a look. And uh, But I wanted to get you over to Sotheby's here to take a look at this. Um, this uh, we loaded these onto the page this morning. These are the catalogs for the uh, upcoming March sales. They have more sales coming in early April for some reason. I don't know why. But here's the Ming sale, and uh, this is quite a catalog. There it is, uh, beautifully done, uh, and you, you really want to get over to the site and take a look at this uh, this thing. There are the pieces like this: is Yong Lo period, uh, beautiful uh, early Ming bowl. These are imperial kilns, um, the, the Chinese during the Ming Dynasty, and well, it started earlier, but during the Ming Dynasty, the Chinese emperors took a real interest in the imperial kilns. And um, here's a fabulous barb rim bowl. You see a similar rim often on uh, celadons from this period, and even later, uh, but spectacularly well done. Spectacular. There's a number of these from uh, the Yuan Dynasty uh, in the Middle East, in Middle Eastern collections at the Top Capi Museum and so forth. But uh, this is a fabulous bowl. It's estimated at two to three hundred thousand uh, dollars. It's a little over 12 inches in diameter to give you an idea of size and scale. But there's a good write-up on it. Um, there's a whole, uh, whole uh, bunch of more information on it. There's a side shot. Come over and take a look at the catalog. And then you have this, this Chun Bai. They call these sweet white Mayping vases. It has Anhui decoration, the incised decoration on it. And uh, this is a young Lo period. Uh, extremely rare uh, in 2014 or 13, 14. Uh, Christie sold one of these, and it brought millions, and I'm very curious to see what this one brings. Um, there's a very nice write-up in here by Regina Crowell, 
if you want to uh, take the moment to read what she has to say about this, uh, this stuff, there it is. You can use the little tool up here to magnify and blow it up. Uh, she's a great writer. Uh, she gets a lot of information in that's very understandable, and she gives good references on where to look for other examples. She's worth, uh, worth paying attention to. She's brilliant. And uh, here's more on this vase, extremely rare. Uh, and this one's estimated at 2.3 to 2.8 million dollars U.S. And it stands around 12 inches tall. So uh, there it is. It's a nice thing. It's a really great thing. Uh, you can even see uh, the little looting line right here in the middle of the photo. It's very clear. Um, here's more on it. Hold on. We'll get out of there. And then there's this. This is a corker. These uh, early uh, Ming Yunglo um, moon flasks. It's when they came, basically they were first made during this period. And this one is just beautifully designed. The, the, the decoration, there's similar examples in the, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, I think there's one in the British Museum and I, there's, another, there's another one in the Palace Museum. I think there's several in the Palace Museum. But Regina Carl also did the write-up on this. This is an exemplary uh, 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 form for, of this type. Uh, there's a lot on it. As you can see, she really liked it. Um, there's a nice blow up here of the uh, decoration. You get a sense of it. And uh, there's the lot, estimated at 2.2 uh, to 3 million for it. Uh, very, very nice. And uh, it measures about 13 inches in height. I had to check. I wasn't sure it was 13 or 14. But beautifully done. All right. And then we're going to get over to um, the royal blue uh, piece. Th this is a fascinating area. And again, Regina Crowell did a write up on this. You want to get over here and take a look at this plate. This plate is done in a, in a variety of colors and patterns, and they reverse the colors back and forth. They add pigment. But this is a spectacular uh, deep blue example made for the court. Uh, really, really amazing. Uh, yeah, here are some of the other examples. Here's in red. Here's another one that has uh, white but with, uh, uh, with more, more breaks in it, a little bit different. And uh, here's this one. And there's a yellow one and a white one. Um, all fabulously rare, extremely, extremely rare. And uh, this, this is a big plate. It's 15 inches in diameter. It's a monster. And it's estimated at 1 to 1.5 million. And uh, yeah, you're probably not going to bid on it, but uh, you, you might want to go and read up on it. It's a, uh, there's a lot of good information in here about this uh, piece. And then you have this, this Jundi, um, uh, Jundi uh, uh, bowl, uh, fabulous good, uh, quality blue and white, uh, came from a Japanese collection, estimated at six to eight hundred thousand. All right, it just goes on and on. And here's one of the one of the most important, I think, one of the most important pieces in it, is a uh, an imperial brush washer. Uh, Quite exceptional, and Regina again. She, I guess, she wrote this whole catalog pretty much. There it is with the Jindi mark, and um, beautiful, beautiful uh, brush washer, eight inches in diameter. This very deep, spectacularly deep cobalt blue five clawed dragon. Because back then, the five clawed dragon did mean the imperial house, imperial court, and um, there's some provenance. It's had a long, distinguished history of ownership in the last 100 years, and it's estimated at 1.5 to 2.5 million. And this may go over that. These are really rare birds, okay? And then we're gonna get down to the last one is this one. This is a later example. It's a Ming uh, Wandli deer jar. These don't turn up very often. There are a few of them in English collections. Um, this was a, a very nice, uh, good size one, 13 inches. But in beautiful condition, this is the thing that's really nice about this example. It's in great condition. And um, it sold um, at Bonhams about uh, 12 years ago. And, uh, but it, it did very well. But a very rare type, beautiful pigment, beautiful color, estimated at 800000 to $1.2 million. Um, so there you go. And the other thing I want to th I want to say about this, there's a nice write-up on it with some good detail, and you can get a real good look at the faces and the expressions on these uh, animals. Is um, at the back of the catalog, they went ahead and included, which is something they typically don't do, is um, pictures of the foot rims, the bases of these pieces. I want to show it to you, so you can go and look, and you can magnify them on this page. Here they are, index of bases. Thank you, Sotheby's, for doing that. It's very nice of you. All right. 
And that's it. That's it for the week. Um, these videos keep getting longer because he's finding more things to share. But at any rate, uh, come and uh, uh, sign up for the newsletter if you don't get it. And uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And uh, we do these every week, as you all know. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Until next time. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.